We know that Justice Clarence Thomas didn't properly disclose his luxury gifts from Harlan Crow on his federal disclosure form. He says it was because the rule was ambiguous. But what about his taxes? That's certainly not ambiguous. You have to report taxes over a relatively small threshold, and it certainly appears that these luxury trips, never mind the tuition that was paid to Justice Clarence Thomas's adopted son, would exceed that threshold. My name is Dina Saigdahl, reporting for Midas Touch. Let's break this down. One problem with trying to figure out whether or not Justice Clarence Thomas committed tax fraud is that we don't have his taxes. Yet again, we are seeing the limitations of law in holding higher elected people like the president and now our Supreme Court justices accountable in terms of finances. You know, cabinet, cabinet level nominees and sub cabinet level nominees are required to disclose their taxes. But somehow, a Supreme Court justice who has a lifetime appointment is not required to disclose their taxes. How are we really supposed to know whether or not they are receiving money in a way that is going to corrupt them unless we see their taxes? Because we've seen with this voluntary federal disclosure form how inadequate it is. And not only that, but the Supreme Court isn't even willing to have an ethical code applied to them like other federal and state judges. So how about having Congress require Supreme Court justice to disclose their taxes? A violation of privacy, you may say? Well, if you care so much about privacy, don't become a Supreme Court justice. There's many legal jobs out there. You could be paid much more. But if you want the kind of power and you want the kind of influence that being a Supreme Court justice allows, then you are going to have to give up some privacy in order for the public to be assured that that power and that influence can't be bought. But just because we as the public don't have access to his taxes doesn't mean a DA can't open an investigation and request them. And at this point, I think they should. There's a huge amount of reporting about luxury gifts he's received and school tuition he's received and yet hasn't properly disclosed them on financial forms. Now, if it were you or me, I would imagine a DA would want to ensure that he properly paid any taxes due for those gifts. And in fact, this is exactly what happened to the CFO of the Trump Organization, Alan Weisenberg. He was convicted of tax fraud. And we know he got gifts such as, you know, payment for his apartment and tuition for his grandchildren. He pled guilty to that, was sentenced to five months in order to pay $2 million in that owed taxes. So if you are going to treat Justice Clarence Thomas as anyone else, with all the reporting out there about him not disclosing gifts that he's received, you should ensure that he's at least paid taxes on it because he shouldn't be above the law. So let's have a prosecutor look into whether or not Justice Clarence Thomas properly paid his taxes just like anybody else. And it's amazing to me the ethical standards and how they're lacking with the Supreme Court. I mean, not only do they not have to have the same as the federal and state judges, but they're not even close to what Congress people have to follow. It is shocking to me that Margie Taylor Greene has more ethical standards she has to follow than a Supreme Court justice. In Congress, if they receive a gift more than $50, $50, they have to request approval from an ethics committee. So before going on one of those trips, they would have to ask for permission. And here we have a Supreme Court justice who not only has any code he has to follow, but no committee to answer to. You know, Chief Justice Roberts, how about forming a committee and have you follow the same standards as a congressperson who has so much less power 
than you do. I think the more power you have, the more standards you should actually follow. But in some weird way, it's the opposite here. Let me give you an example of how strict actually the rules, the ethical rules are for Congress people. AOC went to the Met Gala and she was loaned or borrowed a dress and a handbag and shoes and she didn't pay a rental fee for those things until the House Committee asked her to. And she apologized and paid the fee. But you know, that was considered a big deal for the House Committee. And here we have, let's put this in comparison, a Supreme Court justice going on private jets, going on yachts, having school tuition paid for. None of this is reimbursed by the Supreme Court Justice Thomas, right? We don't even know if he paid taxes on any of this. And yet somehow he may not have broken an ethical rule because they just don't exist or they're not stringent enough for Supreme Court justices. In my view, the more power you have, the more standards you should follow, and the more stringent you should adhere to these things. But instead, we have it where as a congressperson, a representative, not even a senator, a representative, you know, gets in trouble for wearing a dress for a few hours, and a Supreme Court justice may have been able to accept hundreds of thousands of dollars in gifts and not report it and not get in trouble. There is something wrong with the system when we give a Supreme Court justice so much power and so little accountability. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.